Hello, my name is Dr. Claire Furlong, and I'm a senior lecturer and researcher at IHE Delft in the Netherlands. I'm also your module coordinator or course coordinator. In this video, we ask several experts in the field from different organisations the following question. Why is environmental and public health relevant or critical for successful WASH humanitarian responses? And here are their answers. Hello, my name is Andy Bastable and I'm the Head of Water and Sanitation at Oxfam. And I'm here to say a few words about the importance of public health in WASH responses. Um, firstly, I would say, you know, it's so important to understand the prevalent diseases where the fleeing population of IDPs or refugees have come from, um, as that could determine kind of are they more susceptible if there's different diseases kind of prevalent or endemic in the country that they have fled to or the region they have fled to. So that's, that's really important, you know. And the other thing is, what are the biggest um, disease factors in the area which they're now in? Um, we've had situations where we run around doing water and sanitation activities um, and then we find that malaria is the biggest killer and there hasn't been um, a, a malaria program to deal with that. Um, often if people um, have been walking um, three or four days to flee from whatever crisis, um, they're dehydrated, they're malnourished, and those are the really important kind of priorities. Um, of course, clean water, unless there's clean water, um, then if people are malnourished or dehydrated, then any opportunistic disease will take hold. My name is William Carter. I'm the Senior Officer for Washington Emergencies for the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. WASH is a public health response activity. Now, you might not know that from all the different promotional materials that different organizations put out, because we all use the same picture of the kids under the water tap. But when you think about the one and a half to four million people uh, annually who die of lack of access to WASH, most of them children, these people aren't dying of thirst. And our job as, as uh, WASH professionals is not to necessarily turn on the taps and, and keep the water flowing. It's certainly not limited to that. And this is really about a mindset change. Uh, again, we, we come into the sector thinking it's about a lack of access to water, um, but really it's much bigger than that. It's about the, the different risks that, have, that occur either in the environment or from human to human transmission and everything that we can do uh, with water sanitation and hygiene to reduce those risks. That might sound a bit academic or, or kind of immaterial, but it really makes a big difference. If you approach your programming, and I've done WASH as a, as a researcher, as a manager of WASH programs, I've even dug pits for latrines, and in every range of, of work that we do in WASH, if we think about this as a health activity, as reducing risks to human health, that will make a huge difference in the work that we do. Now, I would only add one thing to this, which is dignity. Health is important, and when you spend a lot of time in, in the public health uh, world, the diarrheal disease number will be the, the main thing that people focus on, and that's great. But we also have to think about dignity, the, the lack of dignity that people have when they, when they lack access to WASH. So when we think about it in this perspective, that we're not there to, to save people uh, from dying of thirst, but we're there to reduce risk and improve dignity, that mindset, that thinking will have a huge impact on how you approach your work and the quality of the work that you do, no matter what kind of work that you do. I would have asked the question the way around. Why is WASH crucial for a successful environmental and public health humanitarian response? In my view, WASH, standing for water, sanitation, hygiene, is part of public health. Historically, medical doctors were often major advocates of what we now call WASH interventions, but was defined as public hygiene by Nystan in the beginning of the 19th century 
by being part of medicine whose end is the preservation of health. Even further in the history, the Greek mythology tells us that Aslepsios, the god of medicine, had two daughters, Panacea, the goddess who cures illnesses, and Hygieia, the goddess who preserves health. So when we are talking about hygiene, we are talking about medicine, actually. When looking at major medical crises in the past, sustained improvements of medical indicators have often been reached through or coincided with large interventions that improved humanitarian human living environment. Sorry. This was the case, for example, with the reduction of child mortality following major improvements in urban sanitation in cities in the 19th century, or with the elimination of malaria in certain regions through large-scale drainage of flood plains. The strong link between wash, healthy environments, and health got pushed to the background during the 20th century when antibiotics were discovered. Focus then shifted to cure or to treat patients. It is this link that we would like to emphasize through MSF vision. Doctors are fighting pathogens inside human bodies. Water, hygiene and sanitation or environmental health specialists are fighting against same pathogens but trying to stop or prevent them affecting people. As any wash response should impact the health of a targeted population, relevant health indicators should be identified and monitored from the start, next to the indicators such as coverage. So, such population level health indicators are available from epidemiological data and can give a picture of the effectiveness of WASH interventions. In emergency, however, health indicators will rather help orientate, prioritize overall activities, including water hygiene and sanitation activities. Finally, an environmental public health approach is an opportunity to bring together different professionals, sectors or clusters that do not always communicate or collaborate regularly in emergencies. Those are, for example, the medical, shelter and wash clusters, as well as actors who work on vector control. Aiming at improving population's health as an overall objective encourages discussions and collaborations on how to best roll out interventions in an integrated manner. Good day, everyone. My name is Pierre Bosé and I work at uh, UNICEF headquarters in New York. I'm uh, part of the Washington Emergency Team and I focus uh, on preparedness and response to uh, public health emergencies. As part of my introduction, I think it might be useful to give you uh, a few details about uh, water, sanitation and hygiene at, at UNICEF. Uh, we have a dedicated wash programming in more than 100 countries. Um, and as Global WASH uh, Cluster Agency, UNICEF leads a sector coordination in 85 countries. Uh, UNICEF interventions are implemented uh, through a network of more than 700 uh, WASH professionals and uh, through a, a, relation, a strong relation uh, with um, national governments and communities at national and subnational level. Uh, today, I've been invited to present you why I, I personally think that environmental and public health is relevant, crucial for successful uh, wash humanitarian responses. I, I will start with a comment uh, beyond humanitarian wash, or at least uh, beyond emergencies, uh, to state that in my view, environmental and public health considerations are, are central to any wash program. Uh, let's discuss a bit about environmental aspects first. At UNICEF, we consider that growing up in a clean and safe environmental environment is, is every child's right. Uh, safe access to water and sanitation 
cannot be uh, separated from environmental consideration. Uh, holistic approach uh, is, is required to ensure that drinking water supply is seen as a, as a whole chain uh, and to, to make sure that we have a safe, uh, safe water. Uh, consequences of uh, water, of unsafe uh, water sanitation and hygiene uh, can be deadly on children. Uh, over 700 children under five die every day uh, due to uh, of diarrheal disease due to uh, lack of appropriate uh, wash services. Then, uh, speaking about environment, uh, comes uh, climate change. Uh, effects of, of climate change are already being felt uh, everywhere. Uh, increased demand for water due to low rainfall that can uh, make um, sources uh, to run dry. Uh, water scarcity uh, through climate change that can result in increased costs of water and lead to inequitable access. Uh, on the other hand, uh, heavy rainfall, floods that can damage water sources and sanitation facilities, leading to uh, contamination of, of water supply. Uh, and this is the reason why at UNICEF we, we are committed to make uh, all our wash programs climate resilient uh, and that wash systems contribute to uh, community resilience. This being said, so the wash sector uh, has also a critical role in response to environmental emergencies such as flooding, cyclones, earthquakes, uh, because by disrupting access to safe water and sanitation, environmental emergencies put population at additional risks of uh, diarrhea and other uh, health threats. Finally, uh, wash access is also critical uh, during public health emergencies, uh, such as during outbreaks of cholera or Ebola. Um, wash is essential both in terms of contributing to uh, control of disease, as well as ensuring communities a continuous service uh, in healthcare facilities and, and for population itself. Uh, tailored interventions are uh, required and must be implemented uh, to respond to uh, public health uh, outbreaks. Um, to disease outbreaks, sorry. Uh, this is true for infection prevention and control uh, interventions in healthcare facilities, uh, as well as for a targeted wash intervention in community. Uh, that must be driven by a concept of mobility with uh, dedicated outbreak response teams um, and flexibility with actions based on disease transmission pathways. And, and this I'll be happy to uh, develop a bit more in, in one of our uh, next video. Thank you so much and have a good day. Bye-bye.